Welcome to the Fat Fuel Family Podcast, where every week, Danny and Mauda Vega discuss topics that help families live a healthy and active lifestyle with their little ones, including nutrition and training, peaceful parenting, education, and mindset. To stay up to date, make sure to hit subscribe on this podcast and check out the blog at www.fatfuel.family. You can also find them on Facebook and Instagram at dannyvega.ms, at Fat Fueled Mom, and at Fat Fueled Kids, and Fat Fueled Family on YouTube. Enjoy the show. All right, welcome to the Fat Fuel Family Podcast. I'm your host, Danny Vega, and I'm joined by my revolutionary wife, Maura. How are you, my love? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. This is the first time you do this because I recorded the last one alone. So you, Awesome. But this was your idea. This was, this yeah, was all this her doing. Yeah, this a better doing. idea. So we don't waste our guest time. So I want to start. I wrote this down. I had to write this down because this is a very important subject. And listen, guys, I want you guys to just... Just check your, your feelings for this one, okay? Your ego. Check your ego, check your feelings. I don't care if we disagree. I promise you, I do not care. I do not want to change your mind either. I just well, want I might, you to... but but, well, through, but through free thought and, and a discussion in a civil way. You're right. Because but I... obviously if I think my way is less harmful to my life, I'm going to definitely try to change your, life, your, your mind. Yes, okay, so here's, here's the difference. We're not trying to change your mind on anything other than the freedom of expression, allowing the freedom of spe- expression. So if right. you believe that censorship is is right and is a good idea, then I'm trying to change your mind. Then we're definitely trying to change your mind, and we want to make a case because there's good questions. For example, the inciting violence. That's a that's a very good question, and I didn't even go completely in depth with it because I didn't want to waste too much time. But if you'll 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 listen to it, and if you hear the case that I mentioned, you can look it up and all that stuff because there's several cases. So. Um, we're going to be talking about freedom of expression, which has been under attack and it's been turned up to a, an unprecedented level. So this show is in defense of free speech. And for some reason, I think people conflate defending free speech with endorsing what is being said, but it's not. There's a lot of things that are said that we think are disgusting. There's a lot of things that are that are said that we would not say to our kids or we would not want our children to hear. They're still allowed. They're allowed. Freedom of speech. And, and this is the only country in the world that has freedom of speech written into law. In, in other words, like you can say we have freedom of speech, but unless it's in the eyes of the law, it doesn't matter because at any given time, you, you your speech could be punished. You could look at what happened in Canada. If you say the wrong pronoun, you could be fined. You could, oh, yes. you know, so, um, so here's the deal. So I don't know how we got to a point where freedom of speech became a partisan issue either, which is really, really weird. It should unite all of us. First of all, it's, uh, another thing that I, I've been hearing, it's not illegal to, to scream fire in a theater. And I know that's a surprise to those not familiar with free speech law. Um, it's only illegal if someone does that and people rush out and someone gets hurt. To change that would be the first step in stripping away free speech. In other words, you can give me any example of something that you think should be um, limited of free speech. And I would guarantee you 10 times out of 10, you're going to be mentioning a crime. So if someone says something and then a crime is committed, that's a crime. We have a crime. We have a law. We have laws against crimes. We do not limit free speech. Okay. Um, and we're going to be talking to someone who came from Colombia. Um, we're all Latin American. I know you guys probably think like sometimes when people don't agree with you that it's because you're racist or you're, I don't know, whatever, whatever people are being told. But or maybe it's because your family actually lived in a communist exactly. country where p- members of my family were political prisoners and the way that they got there was by limiting free speech. Yeah, and the same thing with my family. Like we all have, you guys have to understand, we should be able to listen to each other and understand people's experiences of why they came to that conclusion. And if you, if all you have is is an, a personal attack- A cancel. Or, or, or a, cancel, a cancel. Or or all you have is like you're parroting something you heard like examine that because you're being manipulated. You should understand that you you need to be able to understand both sides of an issue. Like you you need to be able to say like, why is it a good idea to have freedom of speech? Like, don't just say it's bad or don't just say it's good. Understand why. Um, uh, So, so here's the other thing. Let me see. Um, So that if, if we limit free speech, that's the first step into into an authoritarian society and this can happen here 
Both of our parents are from Cuba and we, we heard the horror stories from our parents growing up. I don't get offended by many things, but one thing that does offend me is when spoiled, ungrateful Americans don't... Listen, we're all Americans. I was born here. But when spoiled, ungrateful Americans take our freedoms for granted... By the way, right now in Cuba, we mentioned this on the show, they're rounding up artists and musicians. Google San Isidro movement. This is a controversial topic. This is We're going to be talking about things that are controversial, but this is why we're different than any other country. The bottom line, adults should be able to handle any type of words being said. Direct communication is frowned upon nowadays and it's killing our discourse and our ability to disagree civilly. We cannot silence anyone. Besides, why not let the racists, the bigots, all the crazy people out in the open where we can see them? That's To me, that's, that's my opinion. But the rest is, is a legal, moral, and philosophical argument that I would gladly defend uh, against anyone because right is right. Listen to this. Can you imagine? Imagine this, my love. Imagine if Facebook and Twitter banned Black Lives Matter after they burned and looted all those cities and killed people and officers. Multiple times more black and brown people died during those three months than the last several years from police brutality, by the way, which, you know, all of it is terrible. And imagine if they were censored online, deplatformed, had their funds Oof. cut off from fundraising and blacklisted. I don't defend the disgusting Insurance actions. Policies canceled. Yeah, like imagine if they did that to BLM. I don't, I don't defend bad actions and crimes, but I do defend their speech. I will defend the, the freedom of speech of BLM wholeheartedly. I will defend the freedom of speech of communists talking about communism wholeheartedly. I don't want it to happen, but we have to allow the ideas to be... But we have to allow all of them. We have to allow all, all ideas, even the dangerous ones. So don't, be, don't fall for this thing that that's a dangerous idea. Because um, who decides? Yeah. Who decides? Who decides? That's why if you limit free speech for one thing, that's when you open it up. It's like they get their foot in the door and they start to say, well, if that's bad, well, we should also probably think about what else we, we can limit. So I want to leave you with one more quote that I know people have heard it, but I think it's just so powerful. First, they came for the socialists and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me and there was no one left to speak for me. Wow. So defend your right to, to express yourself, whether it be through memes. Don't be like, if memes are taken down, guys, like, think about that. Like art, music, this is culture. This is how, if you guys think that we won the Cold War through um, nuclear uh, escalation, it wasn't. It was rock and roll. Okay, so that's all we, we got to say. I think you guys are going to love this. Hopefully, you're going to love it. At the very least, open your ears to this. Listen through the whole way. And we hope you guys enjoy the show. And now oh, we'll yeah. introduce our guest. Yeah, yeah. Tell, 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 tell them about the guest. Yep. So today on the show, we have for you someone that we've been following for quite some time who is no stranger to being <laughs> censored online for her, for her um, opinions and for her um a post and everything that she says online. Um, so Linda Catalina is an entrepreneur and an activist. She was born in Colombia and her family migrated to um, Miami in the United States because of mostly security, right? And you're going to hear a little bit about her story. Um, she also used to be a liberal until she did her own research and then she realized that she was being misled by the media. And so without further ado, we'd love to welcome Linda, or as you might know her, wake up with Linda to the show. Hey, everybody. I just wanted to take a quick minute to talk about our sponsor, Keto Brick. As you guys know, I have been around since the very beginning when it was just an idea, when Robert was getting ready for the show that took him pro and he needed something to help him hit his macros. And I've seen it grow into the company it is today. Um, just so proud of my friend and I'm so proud of the company he's built, the people he's been able to help as he has several people who work for them. And so he's actually helping people make a living doing this now, which is just unbelievable and so inspirational to me. If you don't know what keto bricks are, they are shelf stable fat bombs for lack of a better term they are 1000 calorie bricks and they have great ingredients they 
have ketogenic macros, usually like 88 to 90 grams of fat with 30 grams of protein. And then the carbs are anywhere from nine to 14, super low carb, super keto friendly. And you can do all types of cool stuff with them. I tell everybody my favorite is keto brick cereal. I chop it up into little chunks and serve it with a bowl of cereal with uh, almond milk or goat milk, which is my favorite. They have several flavors. They now have vegan and whey options. So they have the whey protein peanut butter as well as the old school pea protein peanut butter, which either one of them is easily in my top two go back and forth between those and the toasted almond coconut so definitely go to www.ketobrick.com get yourself some bricks and use vega for a chance to win a whole month supply of bricks all right welcome to the show linda thank you for having me oh we're excited we're to so have excited. you we've, we've been, been uh, uh, we've been how long have we been following her now for a while yeah, yeah like it, probably, probably throughout, throughout the madness of the, the lockdown. lockdown. But honestly, before that. <laughs> yeah, no, she's I mean, I the rollerblading videos. Oh, the rollerblading videos are the best thing ever. <laughs> oh my gosh. But no, I've been following you since before. Like, before. Remember, when we, remember when we used to only make people mad when it came to, like, the, how, what can we say? What do we call the, the things? So we don't oh, the, the bark scenes? The bark scenes. <laughs> Shots. Shots. Yeah, the, the shots. shots. The shots. Yeah. So but now, now I'm like, guys, guys, remember when you, that was like the only thing you had to worry about me, like making you upset about? Yeah. Let's go back. <laughs> now everyone's like, oh, yeah. I'm like, I told you. <laughs> yeah. So many people like blocked me and like stopped following me or like the told, like it was so bizarre. I was just like literally like warning them of what was to come. Um, and now we're all here, like equally screwed. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah. And, and and how are you holding up personally? Like, how how has it been for you? Like, what what has been? Yeah, it's not easy. Because we've, we've been, been like we're now in a place where we're relying, relying on our faith, faith you know, and just just, just trying to like stay, stay above everything. everything. Yeah. Because, because at the end of the day, like we wasted a lot of time, and we don't want to waste, waste time. time. We have yeah. work to do. We have, we have things, things to do. Yeah, and wasted a lot of time in what sense? Like keeping up with things or. Yeah, keeping up with things, watching YouTube videos and, and all that stuff. And it was Getting like... in the rabbit hole. Yeah. And it, honestly, at, at the, the end of the day, the, the rent is still due, the, the, you know, the mortgage is still due. So like... Yeah. I'm on your same boat. I mean, um, I haven't... My rabbit hole moments or the times that I like, wasted a lot of time researching and whatnot was like, like three years ago, I would say. Um, so I haven't had, you know, I waste more time like engaging with followers and, you know, they send me all this stuff and I'm like, I can't, and they're like, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? I'm like, I can't possibly watch like 10 videos a day, read every post, podcast, like yeah. there's so much. And I also, I'm self-employed, like I just closed my business because of COVID. So now I'm merging into e-commerce. So I've been wasting time because my head has been everywhere and I'm getting phone right. calls and it's so much um and like today like one of my girlfriends and i she's local she has an account too and we're like today is like work day you know like we're gonna minimize our time on social and we yeah. need to really focus just on what makes us money um yeah. and we can't really continue to waste time of like what's gonna happen because it's out of our control and i think that's the big lesson here too it's like it's it's like god's plan right whether you know so for some sort of miracle um you know the current president does you know continue to be our leader or right. this other guy which is looks like he will be um take the white house you and i can't do anything we're like three little people <laughs> with like no power yeah um i think that like my main focus right now is just that is like structuring myself um i've been having like I've been going to bed late, so then I wake up late. Like, my whole, like, schedule's, like, messed up. Like, I'm barely, like, like you know, this is, like, my uh, yeah. lunch now, you know? As opposed to having, like, a real meal, you know? Because I've been busy. I've been doing content yeah. for one of my stores. So, I'm, right now, on my personal level, I'm just about organizing my life and how to, like, be consistently, like, making money because we're self-employed. So, that's the most important part. Um, and trying to minimize my stress because like my body reacts really badly to stress. Like I break out, I get yeah, rashes, like 
I mean, I just get messed up like internally and then I manifest it externally. So I'm trying to like minimize all that stress. Like I don't watch any news. I don't even pay for cable, you know? Same, yeah, okay. same. we haven't done that for years. Yet. I quit Twitter like after, you know, they did what they did um, on the weekend. I was like, you know, F you and I disabled yeah, my yeah, account. That. Um, so that's like one less app that I'm like looking at. Um, but yeah, that's where we are now. And, you know, I think we can literally only rely on our faith and hope that God has, that's my cat. Sorry. Um, <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> awesome. okay. hope that, you know, God has the best plan for us and that we can get through right. this, um, together. I do think it's really scary. I'll be honest with you. Like I am. Yeah. Like, it's really, really um, worrisome what's going on right now. I think people have taken for granted this country. Um, I yeah. can't even look at my liberal friends. Like, I'll be honest with you, I'm very cutthroat. Like, I don't want to see them. I don't want to hear from them. This may sound bad to your listeners, but it has nothing to do with their views, right? So, like, I'm not the type yeah. of person to be like, why are you pro-choice? Like you know you're a murderer or whatever it may be like we just you know we just respect each right. other's views but right now when you're cheering for the fall of america when you're cheering yeah. for communism when you're okay with censorship yeah, because hard. you don't like someone i'm like f you like that's where yeah, i'm like, no. Absolutely. Yeah. So hard, girl. Yeah. like, like so you're you. screwing all of it like you your hate for this one man and your ego is literally driving us into genocide. Like, I'm not even kidding. Yeah. Exactly. So that's where I'm at right now. Like, minimizing my contact with, like, anybody that's, you know, happy about the fall of the West, basically. I totally agree. Well, before, before you get started, because I want to say something. I think, like, we're going to be today, we're going to talk a lot about the main issue is going to be the censorship. Because... Yeah. And I'm so grateful that it's you because all we have is stories from our parents because our parents both came from Cuba. You were there, you know, you were in Colombia. You can, you can compare different, you know, how you were raised up, how we, you know, how things were there versus here. And I completely agree with like this, this lack of gratitude for what we have because they don't understand that this is not how it is everywhere else. You know, you can't. There's no First Amendment anywhere else around the world. And for people to start like playing loose with things like we'll, we'll get into because yeah, we're going to talk about listener questions where we'll like round table it. But that's why I'm grateful for your experience, because I think people just think, oh, there's we've lost the, uh, the ability to communicate and, and, and yeah, disagree. So people are just like, oh, you're a racist, you know, and it's like it's so you yeah, don't even know. Like like you need to understand both sides just understand both sides so you can understand why people think people are not caricatures people are are, are 3d human beings with experience yes. that inform our opinion so yeah let's let's so, let's yeah, get it we'll going get into it girl and i mean i guess you kind of did answer this somewhat but i'll still ask the question you know we always lead with that question what is the most critical problem that you are currently trying to solve um i mean staying present i think and focusing on like issues that i have on my life like in my life yeah um you know i have goals i have aspirations i um i started diving into e-commerce over a year ago and i have, still have so much to learn i have like courses to take that i bought i have to create content i have to edit it like i do most of things myself i do hire some people yeah. here and there so my biggest challenge for 2021 is like time management like i've been so bad at time management lately like next thing i know it's like now it's like oh my god it's 3 30 and like i haven't accomplished you know half of my to-do list today um but you know on a personal level it's just really that it's getting organized it's automation like i need to do a lot of like this like um like, uh, what is it called? Like, email marketing and stuff like that that I haven't done. Yep. Yeah. So, Funnels and you know, all that yeah. good stuff. Because my biggest issue right now, it's what we're living. <laughs> you know, but that's external. Yeah. Like, I can't control that. I can't yeah. control what yeah. happens in Washington, D.C., what they do in Congress, in the Senate. Um, 
you know, we can only, like I said, hope for the best. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, now this is perfect. Perfect timing. Let's let's talk about, you know, where you were born, your upbringing, you know, your experience coming here, becoming a citizen, you know, because it's it's one thing to talk about topics when, you know, we, we don't understand them, but you live them. So tell us about that so our listeners can kind of learn about that. Right. So I was born in Cali, Colombia. Um, I immigrated here in 1999, so I was 11 years old. My first grade here was sixth grade, so I came here in the summer, you know, like really early in the summer, and then uh, right after fifth grade finished, I came here, spent the whole summer, started sixth grade. Um, you know, I always tell people that that everyone here comes for the same reason, right? Most people are like, most people here, you know, come for economic opportunity. That's why a lot of people don't care if they have to come to the border and pick up, you know, tomatoes, like for 20 years before they start their own farm or whatever it is. Like, right. you know, when I look at my childhood, like I had a beautiful childhood with problems here and there, but we were, you know, we weren't poor. We were I'd say like, you know, middle class family, some of our other family members were well off. I went to a private school, I had private health insurance. Um, our Christmases were great. Like we, you know, I was, I was, we did well in Colombia. It wasn't about that, but you know, two things drove us the move, which is insecurity. Um, you know, like I tell people, I'm like, you don't know what it's like that you want to go jog with your headphones and they're like, no, 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 you don't take your headphones because they're going to know it's the white head pod and they're going to steal your phone. You know, you don't know that. Right. You have no freaking idea what that is. You go and you run wherever, all over Miami with your head pods on, no problem, right? Like this is not an issue right. that we'll ever experience in Kendall. When? You're not going to yes. hear <laughs> of a robber, exactly. you know, you're not going to hear of like, a, you know, a, a thief that's going to come and like do that. Um, and same thing with sneakers. Like I'll, I'll never remember like, oh, like don't wear your Nikes like around this neighborhood oh, wow. because they'll steal them. Like we don't worry about that here. I'm sure like yeah. in some like, you know, ghetto places perhaps, but you know, so insecurity is a big one. Um, there was a lot of like, you know, threats from um like some of my family members had gotten threats from you know uh whether it's like terrorist groups like la spark and stuff like that for kidnapping like kidnapping was like really big when like in the 80s and 90s in bogota is the worst right i don't know if it was yeah i think like bogota was bad like it's it's better now i don't know if things are getting like pretty dark again but you know when we were there I remember one of my uncle's workers in his one of his farms and one of his fincas was found like tortured and dead, you know, wow. thrown in like a ditch the next day. Um, and those were kind of like the warnings that you start seeing like, oh, man, like, you know, because what it is, is like the, the far left uh, terrorist organizations that I have pointed out before uh, for us is Las Farc. Las Fuerzas Revolucionarias de Colombia, because people don't understand, like this little, this little like Antifa thing. It's like, oh, it's not a big deal. It's, it's not a big deal now. <laughs> Wait till they get the funding and start shooting people and start taking territory, which we have already seen with Chaz. Like they've already tried to like take some territory. You know what I mean? In like yeah. Seattle and and Portland and whatnot. And you know that's how Las Farc started sixty years ago. They didn't start off with like. A, a perfectly elaborated plan and guns right. and, and all this operation, they started small and then they get funding from criminal organizations. They start right. taking territory and when they start taking territory, they start in the jungle, but then they start coming closer and closer and closer to each city until you're like surrounded and then you're like, okay, I gotta get out of here. I gotta go somewhere safe. So one of the last things that happened in I think it was like the month before we moved here in May of 1999, um, there was a kidnapping at a local church um, in a very affluent neighborhood. So let's say like people are in Brickle at church wow. and in comes this bus, pulls up with the rebels. They kidnapped 60 people wow. that were at mass at 10 a.m. And that's it. 
<laughs> people wow. are kidnapped and I think they let them go like a few days later but like the point they do that because they know that those people have money so then they can ask for ransom right. money sometimes they kill them sometimes they let them go like you just don't know so you know those things to us were um, enough to know that we had to leave um, I think that the majority of immigrants whether it's Mexicans or Colombians or you know, Spanish, whatever. I think most people will agree that if the countries have the same opportunities, freedoms, and economic opportunity as the U.S., most people would not leave. They wouldn't. Yeah. Like, yeah. Cubans yeah. would have never left the island if it wasn't for what happened, you know? Exactly. You have uh, generations, like, you guys would probably wouldn't be here because your parents would have stayed. It was prosperous. Right. It was beautiful. You know, so that's... That's really what it comes down to. And then, like, our minimum wage in Colombia is, like, a $1,000 a month for, like, minimum wage. Like, something ridiculous. We know here, you know, you can make $1,000 a day if you want to. You know, or $1,000 a week or in two days, you know. Yeah. So, um, we came here. My mom, um, we got papers through my stepdad. Um, he was an American citizen and um, that's that was like our process. I became a citizen six years ago now. Well, no, seven years ago, right? Because it was in, in 2000 and ooh, maybe more. Wait, 2014 to 2020. Yeah, so seven years ago, I became a citizen, which is a long process. You have to apply. You have They have to look at your record. You're not a criminal. You got to tell them every single time you left the country. So it's a very extensive long process they do fingerprints you know you go into an interview um they ask all these you know they ask it's it's actually really really slack um and i really hope that they actually make it harder for people to become a citizen because i can tell you firsthand that you go in and it's like 10 questions you know like who's your governor name i remember my grandmother (laughs) yeah You know, like name a Florida senator, like, you know, what's this, the, the, the state, you know, the capital state, whatever. So that's it. Then you do a story and ceremony, they give you your papers and then you become a citizen. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's the beauty. That's, that's where there's so many things like you don't know, like the safety of your money in the bank. You don't know, like those are just all those things. And then it's just a different thing. That's why people like us. You know, and, and I'm glad, like, I talk to Venezuelans all the time. And, you know, it's very, very clear. This has been going on for 20 years with them. Yeah. So now they're kind of in the same boat as us as Cubans. Yeah. And, and like, that's when, when people make fun of that and say you're you're exaggerating. It's, it's, it's really infuriating. Oh, it's it infuriating. is infuriating. It really is. It is. Like, yeah. the freedom of speech thing, it needs to be... Oh, it's so infuriating. It needs to, it needs to get, you know, nipped in the bud because... The First Amendment doesn't even matter because companies, private companies, technically can do what they're doing. The problem is the culture is so sick it's that the culture, culture doesn't, yeah. the culture accepts it yeah. and the culture should not accept it. There's so much hate. And that's the problem. Like, I've never, yeah. I never thought that humans would be so evil until now. You know, like yeah. I, you know, you, you can get hate of people calling you names or making fun of your looks or whatever it may be. And like that has always been going on. And, you know, when we were kids before social media, you always had bullies. Like, that's nothing new under the sun. But now there's a thirst for blood. There's a thirst to see people, like, suffer. Like, I want you to be fired. I want you to be outcasted from society because you have a different view than me. And I never even took the time to understand why you feel or think the way that you do. I don't care. I want you completely gone. Like... And that's what they're doing to, you know, people on the right. They've been doing this for a while. And they're using they're using that the government too to do that. It's yeah. like I want to use this massive government to to do my bidding because right. I'm a coward, right. and I want to use someone else to to do that for me to be the bully. Corporations, yeah. yeah. Corporations. Let's talk about the well, listener we have questions. A listener yeah. question yeah. These are all listener questions. Yeah. Now. Someone asked, and this is a great question. So, how should people with an opinion approach, you know, sharing their views? Um, with with host- with the hostility and the culture that we have now, you know, on social media, how the can someone? Culture, yeah. yeah, the cancel culture. How can someone even begin? Right? Like, what do you? What are your thoughts on that? 
you know, I think that if it wasn't like what we're living right now, I would say to just, you know, you know, have the balls to do it. it and not care and just block people off. And that's usually how it is. Like, you know, I mean, we've been seeing this from the beginning of times. So like if you're a Christian, you know, you know, the story of Jesus, they canceled him too. Right. Like, yeah, <laughs> they, they went as far as killing him to because he, he wasn't um, cooperating or wasn't in line with the Jewish establishment. Um, so right. cancel culture goes back like thousands of years, um, you know, but I would say right now where we are in limbo and where we're headed towards a totalitarian state, I'm sorry, but that's really where we're headed. Um, yes, it is. I would always say that I, I know this is going to sound bad, but I'm just like, I don't even know if you should, you know, like. Yeah, if you sure. asked me this a month ago, I would have been like, who cares? Open up your Instagram. You're but like now you don't even know when what they're going to ban you for. You know, I have gotten memes taken down as hate speech. You just right. don't know. Like it's so like my friend today did a story that says something about civil war. And I'm immediately like, take that story down right now. You know, they're going to think that you're like yeah. inciting, violence. inciting violence, take it down. Yep. So like, we don't know what to say anymore. Like, you know, I had a story taken down yesterday or the day before because it was the IGTV that I posted of some ladies screaming at um, Schumer. <laughs> and oh, yeah, that was great. And that was I, super good. I reposted it on my story and I said, this is who I want to room with in the concentration camps obviously a joke and yeah. that was taken down for like i forgot what the excuse was right. so what if you were a comedian like you, you there's no humor anymore like, oh, they're, really, like they're really limiting people's ability like it's beyond politics they're really limiting creators like imagination like if you want to make a joke, you don't even know if it's going to be taken seriously by these algorithms, these artificial intelligence algorithms, and you're going to be deplatformed yeah. completely. So I think right yeah. now it's a really scary time, and I'm very positive. You know, I, I trust that even if, you know, we do go start going downhill, you know, God has a plan. We may have to rise up. I mean, I don't know the, the outcome. Yeah. yeah. Um, but like, unless you're like self-sustainable at this point, um, they'll they'll try to cancel you out of like your insurance company if they can. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Yeah. we saw that. I saw a post by like this baseball player that's like, "We'll be all right, but AG AG insurance cancel their policy because of my social media profile." Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this is the kind of stuff. Have you seeing. heard also, Linda, of the San Isidro movement in Cuba? Yeah, somewhat. I've seen it through like, uh, what is this commentator? Ola Taloa or whatever. Yes, yeah, yes. they're like, they're rounding up musicians and artists. Yeah. Rounding them up. Yeah. And, and it's, it's just like 90 miles, miles away from, my, from, from Key West, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's not so far. Scary. Yeah. It's so scary. But it's true. It's true what you say. We have, we have friends that have been fired on the spot for making a joke about a mask yeah yeah like, you know it's beyond political you're not anti-mask and automatically you should be canceled you know yeah. um i i posted it this week my friends in the wellness community the wellness community is really split like the um oh my god oh yeah what is it yeah it's like the wellness community i guess you'd say you know and like the spiritual community like there's the side of like the fake spiritual people that they literally pretend to be all about like the vibes and the energy and all this shit like crystals, all the new yeah. age things but then they're like we follow everything the mainstream media says mask yes lockdowns yes and then there's the other side where they're questioning masks they're questioning vaccines they're questioning all these things and now this side wants to cancel this side yeah. So I have girlfriends of mine that own different beauty brands and have their own platforms and they've been targeted. Even if it's not political, they're targeted because they question masks. So now they're anti-science, right. domestic terrorists, because that's the new key word, domestic terrorists. Domestic you know, terrorists. Yep. You don't wear a mask, you're a domestic terrorist. So it all comes down to the media, which is why I've said before that we needed to prosecute the media um and they're like oh you're against free speech or free media i'm like we don't have a free media we have a machine that 
it's a leftist machine that is a mouthpiece to the Democratic Party. That is not a free and fair media is what you're not understanding. They should have repercussions. They should have some sort of, there should be some sort of legality to go after these people because they can't. My question is, when is it going to end and how? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. We're, we're, we're the same thing with the like with all the the policies like you know i'm, I'm like guys this is 2021 like flu season goes from what like april march oh april gosh, so to the summer the like and then now you're telling me there's a mutation so now what so now we gotta no, keep the mask again this is like forever, there's yeah. always gonna be something but i knew it the minute they said like two weeks look, again yeah. we're you know my family's cuban my grandfather was a political prisoner we smell this stuff a mile away the minute they said it's just two weeks i was like no no, no, it's not. Yeah. I was like, no, this is forever. Like, yeah. and here we are, you know, so. Um, well, I want, okay, so we're going to go to, let me just say this. I, Linda, I want to hear your thoughts on it. But because this person asked this, I, I brought up the case law <laughs> because I was like, <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not, people are listening. We got thousands of listeners and I'm going to bring, you know, I'm going to, when you're done, you know, giving your opinion, I want to talk about this because I took. I went to Columbia University. The president of my school is a free speech advocate. Yeah, well, I took his freedom of speech class. <laughs> what? What? Was he free speech? He was. Oh, he was? Okay. He had he a, a Medina Jad. He had a Medina Jad at the school oh, okay. and all the conservatives okay. were going crazy. And I'm like, listen, you yeah. got to let, yeah, let everybody talk. You got to let everybody talk. You have to. It's ideas. You don't win by forcing an idea down someone's throat or saying that's too dangerous to say a word, you know? Right. So, um, Someone asked this, and I'm glad they did, and uh, I want to hear your thoughts. Is Can you explain your stance on free speech when it comes to inciting violence? So, what do you mean inciting violence? Like, go So, like, I think what they're talking about is, um, I think what they're talking about is, like, you know, basically the impeachment. The big, the, the big thing with the impeachment right now is, you know, um, that the president incited violence by telling people to come come over so they, they're forgetting all the other things that have been said for years and and right now if you go right now you can look on twitter all the things by terrorist groups that that are Being calls right. to action but they're saying we should be limiting speech here because it incites violence and the the, the definition i guess they would they would be very broad it would be something i don't even know um if you say civil war huh? right so first of all you know they're interpreting whatever they want that's that's also been an issue with these yeah. companies and i've been banned from twitter before and they make these very ambiguous um terms of service that that's why i say you just don't know so at no point did the president ever say breach the capital you know get violent, do something illegal, break windows, even though that's not violence, that would be considered vandalism. Violence is an act where you're actually going to hurt someone or a group of people, right? you know, intentionally. That never happened. You can't, we don't respect Congress anymore. Congress is a yeah, fucking yeah. joke. They have trashed the constitution. Yeah. 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 They trashed the constitution there's no morality within that group of people. And they think that just not liking the president constitutes as a basis to impeach him. You have to have probable cause. And here's the thing. They talk about, oh, we're a country of law and order. Like, you know, what they did was illegal. Okay, what you are doing right now, which is trying to impeach the president over your feelings is actually illegal and can be penalized for up to five years in prison. I doubt anyone's going to prosecute them, of but that's not. actually it. Right. Because when you say the president incited violence, you need to have proof of that. Yep. Yeah. You need to have proof of yeah. that. It's just like the libel, the, the defamation case that Lynn Wood won for that Covington kid, right? What happens? Yes. Yeah. We saw a clip or an image of a kid staring at some African-American elder uh, of course, he's the victim, or the, the guy's the victim, and then the perpetrator is the guy wearing a MAGA hat, and he was disrespectful. How dare he? He's an elder. Even though he didn't say anything, all he did was smirk and stare. That's it. That yeah. drove 
people to say the craziest things on Twitter. And I remember because I saw it all happening live. Like there was even some uh, uh, an image of that somebody famous with a blue check mark put of the kid being put through a wood ch a wood chipper wood a whatever wood chipper. call it. Um, you know, calling for the kid to be right. like killed and all these things, right? You can, I'm sure you can still Google search it, and all those tweets are going to be there. And that's all legal. That's all legal. And that's it's all legal. It should be. Too, right? It should like, be legal. That's so the I, but this it's is a hypocrisy. Too. This is my yeah, exactly. position. This is my position, and it's and it's the way that I think that Poland is handling this situation is. They are private companies, but they should also, because they do get benefits from the government, they should be abiding by the Constitution. I'm fucking sick and tired of listening to people making up excuses that they're private so they can do whatever they want. We already know that's no. not true because private companies are being forced to close down and are being forced to do COVID protocols. They're not doing whatever they want. So right. that hypocrisy has got to stop because if not, then open up the entire country with no fines. Exactly. You don't have to tell businesses to make people wear a mask. Like, where is why is there a double standard between Twitter banning whoever they want because they're a private company, and then restaurants and clubs and whatever doing whatever they want? We still have a curfew in Miami. Clubs are still That's not open until five a.m. You know where? What? You still have a curfew? Yeah. I didn't even know you still had a curfew. Oh my god. Oh gosh. yeah, Miami. I know Miami's terrible. I know it's terrible. We left Miami for many reasons, but that's I didn't know that that the curfew no, was still on. No, I think on. they still have a curfew. I went to South Beach. I was I was in Ocean Drive like like a month or two ago to film something and I was like I called my dad. I was like how are these business open? There's nobody there. He goes they're charging them half rent. So now the the corporate um real estate owners are getting screwed too because they have to charge half, you know, half Yeah just so these people can make their rent and it's all artificial it's not like we're in a depression it's it's an artificially caused That's thing right. yeah. yeah so in terms of free speech i think the best way to go about it is local and state laws and federal laws yeah yeah like if you're plotting to kidnap someone on a social media app or to to kill them i understand why they would take measures to stop you from doing that and not wanting that on their platform if you're distributing child porn you know yeah but right it's not like that like leftists because they're not on our side and because they want to be like they hate you know the president they hate everybody a conservative republicans they are okay with it oh maybe he yeah. shouldn't have said that it's this you know they make up excuses for it they haven't lived it. They have no idea. I guarantee you these people haven't actually printed out the terms of conditions and, and the terms of services and read them to see how ambiguous they are and how they are based on ideology. They are based yeah. on a leftist yeah. ideology. They're not based on freedom at all. That's an illusion and that's a lie. So anybody cheering from this has a very low IQ. They're very, very dumb. Yes. And, Mental and regression, think, like you say. Yeah. Mental <laughs> regression. Yeah. Like, they're, they're just, they're idiots. And, you know, eventually it's going to catch up to them. Because it's not going to stop with conservatives. Like, maybe one day they wake up and they're like, wait, this isn't right. You know? Um, yeah. Yeah. Our First Amendment, what people don't understand is that our First Amendment of freedom of speech wouldn't wouldn't exist if it wasn't because there is unpopular speech. Like the First Amendment covers okay. unpopular speech. Why do you think it was there to begin with? You think they that the founding fathers made it up because everybody agreed? No. It was be, it was literally to protect what is going on right now. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely, girl. We are totally. In yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta mention this. This is oh, very yeah, important. Oh yeah, go ahead, mention very, that very important. No, very I'm important. not gonna not mention it. So yeah, do it, do it. Like, I forgot about that. Everything that you mentioned, that's conspiracy. If you're trying to kidnap someone, that's a law. There's a law against conspiracy. Right. You mentioned child pornography. There's a law that's against a law, child though. pornography. Yeah. There are laws breaking law. for breaking a law. If someone screams fire in a theater, that's one that everybody thinks. If you scream fire in a theater, it's it's totally legal to scream fire in yeah. a theater. If you do it and it actually happens, people actually run and they, they listen to you, it's not the act of you screaming it. It's it's the act of people running and then the trampling. That is what the law is. So 
There's a, a test called the Brandenburg test, and it's 1973, Hess versus Indiana. Um, they applied the Brandenburg test. Um, this Basically, this, this uh, protester said, we'll take the effing street again, and the Supreme Court ruled that Hess's profanity was perfected, uh, protected under that speech. So now we talk about 1982 NAACP uh uh, versus Claiborne Hardware. This one, Charles Evers threatened violence against those who refused to boycott white, white businesses. The Supreme Court applied the Brandenburg test and found that the speech was protected. Strong and effective extemporaneous rhetoric cannot be nicely channeled in purely dulcet phrases. Meaning, like, you don't have to make your stuff pretty. You, you can say whatever you want. An advocate must be free to stimulate his audience with spontaneous and emotional appeals for unity and action in a common cause. When such appeals do not incite lawless action, they must be regarded as protected speech. That just means that you could say whatever you want as long as it doesn't cause the crime to happen, period. If a crime happens because of what you said, Im imminently. Like, let's say I say, let's go kill the president. I could say that right now. I could say, let's go kill everyone in Congress because there's no likelihood of people going to go kill there's been so many uh times like when when bernie sanders said you know that 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 we're killing people because of you know we're we're changing health care and then that one guy went and killed a bunch of people bernie sanders speech is protected because it didn't happen right away and he that's that's a perfect example when when obama said um you know i forgot what he was what he commented on and then that one guy shot up like six people um, the Obama, again, is it nice what he says? Do I approve of it? Absolutely not. But his speech is protected. That is all of that is protected. So, um, you know, for anybody who's saying they, they wanted to know, like, what do we think about inciting um, violence? Stop falling for that because Twitter saying the likelihood and YouTube is saying because we're taking that down because of the likelihood of this. That's that's that has nothing to do with freedom of speech. Yeah. And they're acting as publishers. The minute you start. Um, taking some posts and making them higher and taking some posts and making yeah, them lower. The thing. Where do you draw the line, right? Like that's why Section 230 needs yeah, to be yeah, changed. Yeah. So anyways, let's go on. Sorry, my little soapbox. I had to get on my soapbox. <laughs> so, so anyways, Linda, how do we stop this craziness? <laughs> if, if, if we can, you know, what do you think the future looks like? And I mean, more realistically, it's like, how can we prepare, right? Because that's yeah. what we're just thinking about. Like, that's all we can control. Like, how can I prepare my family? um for you know totalitarian state or whatever it is that's going to occur because it is it is a little bit terrifying to be honest yep. what so you guys are not in miami no, no we're, in we're in tampa we moved to tampa in 2014 i know i'm so bummed you i missed you when here. you came you came one time and i was like, yeah we oh, found out the happened. day it happened and it was, it like, was like too late yeah yeah yeah, but yeah we're in tampa and yeah you we love like it here. You like yeah. it? Tampa's super crazy. Like we have uh, Jane Castro. We call her Jane Castro. Yeah, she's you know, crazy. And our commissioners. We have, yeah. But we live in Brandon, like which is like the Kendall of, of. Uh, but of not Tampa. really. It's more like. It's more like what would you call it then? West Miami. Well, no, I guess you could say Kendall, but like we're like in, like this is like Republican country. So. Like, yeah, but it's like very like. Oh yeah, a lot of yeah, a lot of conservatives. A lot out of here. conservatives. But it's much more chill out here. It's just more yeah, just a little more country. People. Yeah. Um, so I think honestly, the future is offline. I think that, and it's hard for me to say, cause like I built something online and like I have stores online and other accounts, but I think the most prepared people, like I just spoke to one of my girlfriends, um, you may follow her, Talia. She posts a lot. Oh, of she, we love her too. Yeah. So I think the future is exactly what her and her family have done, which is they packed their shit. They got land in the middle of nowhere and they're building yes. and they're being self-sustainable and i think that's yep. going to be our future i think it's going to be communities i think we're going to go back to how really god intended us to live um yeah. you know and living from the soil like having your own you know water resource and i know a few people that have done it and they're so happy you know like they were barely affected by any of this covid bullshit because they had their own like you know water sources they trade food with their neighbors they get the yeah, meat from the local farm you know either they grow their own vegetables and stuff what they can depending on the soil and stuff um if not they go they go to their other neighbors you know they have their right, their right. guns so their children are homeschooled and i think that traditional um 
you know, traditional community like model, it's really the future. Um, and I don't do it. I'm not married right now. You know, I'm not, I'm not married, so I'm not going to do it. Like I'm not going to buy a piece of land by myself and I go live there alone, you know, like, but, but the minute that I do and I find someone that's, that's literally like what I want to do. Like somewhere in Florida, you can grow your own hemp. You can grow your own stuff. You still have nice weather, you know, even here in Florida, you can still be close to, you know, whether it's in the middle of our, of our state. And then, you know, if you want to go to the beach, you drive those six hours or whatever it may be. But I think being self-sustainable is definitely the future. It's going to be the only way. Yep. Yep, I agree. That's exactly what we would have said. Yeah. All right. So um, this is an interesting one because I think if we were better at this, then people would understand a little bit more. At the same time, we have the, the chips stacked against us because of the censorship and the way that um opinion is so like squashed but what do you think about this how can hispanics leverage their experience to share the importance of free speech on social media almost impossible at this moment i mean we saw how they also um totally punished they're not punished but we saw how the left they couldn't get over the fact that so many latinos voted for trump um and especially yeah. here in the south florida community they came really hard uh, against cubans you know they they said awful yeah. things against cubans that they you know they're the because they're racist they like to be bullies i mean i heard every excuse in the book as to why cubans voted for trump oh it's because the republican party has um uh what is it um uh, use the communism to push their agenda. It's because this, they said everything except Cubans actually lived communism. It's crazy. Right. And what about Venezuelans? They, what did they say about Venezuelans? Because they voted like 90% also. They were very, this election. You had some Venezuelans that were pro Biden. I, I saw them and I saw Cubans too. And it's really scary because. But mostly, most Venezuelans too, though. They were, they like, were Cubans, right? They, they voted, voted mostly, mostly. Right now, the Trump. split between. Cubans that voted for Trump is 60-40. It's really scary. Like, it's not even... But yeah, girl, like, when you were talking about your friends, like, oh, it's so enraging to me that I... Like, it's shocking. I do have Cuban friends that their families fled and they're, they're you know, they're totally for everything that's going on. For, and viral like, videos. For, like, for cutting off someone's ability to speak. I'm like, how do you think Castro did what he did? He controlled the media. This is very simple. Just go back and read like history, and it's just it's honestly shocking. Yeah, um, I I don't know honestly. Like right now, it doesn't matter if you're Hispanic. They're still gonna. They're still okay. You guys are back. It doesn't matter if you're Hispanic. You're still gonna be canceled. You know, it doesn't matter if you're gay. You're gonna be canceled. The left has created this whole illusion that they want to be uh, inclusive, and we need to have equality and diversity is our greatest strength not diversity of thought because nope. they they cancel black people they cancel hispanics they cancel gays they cancel chinese if they they don't agree with their insane liberal policies or liberal culture right. um you know so as far as like i wish i had another answer for people like how can we like talk about our situation how can we inform people well right now we're you know we're facing a time when it doesn't matter whether you you actually fled from a communist country it doesn't matter if you were a political you know prisoner you know the left is gonna come at you and be like no you didn't you don't know what communism is you don't know what socialism is you're just a racist you just want to be white then it like so it's like I, I just honestly like my solution for the longest time has been we need to separate the country it sounds crazy yeah. I don't even think you can do it I mean unless states yeah. secede but I think it would be the most and least violent way to do it like you know what we can yeah. yeah, coexist they can have their own communities we or can't something, coexist like, together we can't coexist if you're telling me we can't even coexist on a platform yeah 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 I don't want to get into like, because honestly, I don't think political p- politics is where I don't think politics matters. Like, I don't think. But we, getting involved locally, you don't think getting involved matters? locally with politics. I mean, no, not me personally. I don't like, I don't think politics is the answer. And I don't think we should be culture. spreading, spreading that. 
Huh? It's culture. culture. It's culture. It's absolutely culture. Like, like we need to, we need to, you know, share how we live our lives and all that stuff. Yeah, we Sorry need to that I, examples. I, this is, th I know who asked this, and it's a friend of ours, so I could tell him, you know what, I don't want, I don't want to answer that because I don't want people to think that we advocate for politics. I hate politics. Yeah. I absolutely hate politics, and I think what you're doing, Linda, like it's funny because people don't understand like the power of a meme. Yeah. People, people don't, don't understand, understand like, like memes and like because they disarm you and like you're like you know what that's funny like laugh yeah. about it laugh about because it. you know why because people don't bother to read they're not gonna read no one can say you're not gonna you're not gonna sit here and like say well look this is my platform they don't care about that like you have to tell them like how it affects them you have to show them with movies you have to show them with you know music and and culture and all that stuff so yeah. i just for our audience i don't want them to think that we that we're thinking here that no, we yeah. need to go elect republicans or something like no, that like no, to no. me that that's that's garbage no. like now when when you're when you're in a, a an election where the the choice is so clear and you know you're like wait my my family the way i do business is going to be affected yeah go yeah, out and vote yeah. of course but like this is the it has to be culture you know, you know it has it has to be. Be. yeah our culture and that's why girl you know yeah, I, yeah, go I, ahead, go ahead. I think i posted about this last week or earlier this week when i was criticizing the conservatives um because i don't whatever um, I don't really know. I know, I know there. Like, it's not about parties. It's not right, about parties. Right. And, um, you know, I talked about how we need to influence culture. And the reason why it's because, for example, um, I was reading a post yesterday by this pro life organization. Um, I know the founder's name is uh, Lila or Lila or whatever. Um, I forgot what it's called right now. Life Org. Like, they're the people that have gotten, you know, Planned Parenthood, like, videos of them, like, offering abortions to, like... Oh, live is that the, one that the one that used to right. work for Planned Parenthood? Live is Action that... Org? Live Action, that one. Okay, and then, live action org, you know, yeah. she made... The, the founder, she made a post about how, like, what, what does it look like for her organization under a Biden-Harris administration? Because with Trump, they had so many protections, and the pro-life movement made so many strides and whatnot. And, and but now... Um, when they're Biden Harris, they're like, you know, they want abortions up to the point of birth and like all these things. And then yeah. her answer was influencing the culture, which is so true. Yeah. Because, um, you know, if if you are growing up in a household, or maybe not in the house, but you you go to public education and then you you go to university where your professors and everyone around you, it's minimizing or not giving enough emphasis to life and telling you that you know uh, you know a baby's just a fetus and that um you know and 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 the, the 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 words that they choose and stuff like that you you may go from being a pro-life person to a pro-choice person right mm -hmm. um and that's why a lot of parents are pulling their kids from public school because they've realized that they're they're teaching them about sex very early on, like not just like you know like anal sex and like kinky shit and BDSM or yeah, whatever. Yeah, gender called. choice, right? Like all these things, and and now you know, like when I went to school, we didn't have any of this transgender like um, what is it called uh, culture, and now we can't even um, talk about it. You know, it used to be that um, you know we we used to say it was gender dysphoria. Well, now, you know, you can't categorize it as a, you know, disorder because you're a bigot, <laughs> you know? Right. So I think a lot of it is culture and it's really hard because go on Netflix. Every show is going to have, you know, the agenda Something. of everything, you know? And yeah. Thai white, you know, that's another thing. White people are the problems of, they're, they're, they're the evil, white people are evil, white people own slaves, white people are rapists, white supremacy, white nationalism, white, 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 white. And then they go, and then they go vote for an old white guy. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then they come move. My, my, my biggest thing that I asked, you know, I've asked my friends before who are so like white people this, I'm like, why do you move to a, like a majority white country? Why don't you go move to like, wh why don't you move to Mexico? Why didn't you move to yeah. to to Congo? 
Yeah. I understand you come to a white country to benefit benefit from what what they built. You know, oh, it was slaves that built it. Whatever the constitution, our way of government, our way of living was by Europeans. The majority. Sorry, that's just the way that it is. Oh, they stole land, sweetheart. Every land is stolen. It's called conquered. Okay, South American countries, same thing. It doesn't matter. That's just the way that it is. We're not going to go back 400 years and be pissed off about some event that none of us witnessed. We're here now. Exactly. So um, I think it's influencing culture. You know, the the left has everything. They have academia. They have, yeah. um, uh, you know, social media. They have the media. They have Hollywood. They have it all. And corporations. We, for some reason, or whether it's you want to, I don't want to say we, but you know, people that think differently, we don't have anything. So yeah. we either need to build our own society where we have our own social media apps, our own media, our own corporations, um, or, you know, um, or I, I, I'm just not sure because we, we have to fight back against the culture. You know, the fact that yeah. you have, um, people that think it's okay to start sexually transitioning a kid at seven years old, it's yeah. pretty disturbing. Yeah. It is disturbing. Yeah, yeah, before they go through puberty, that's yeah. that's that's no turning yeah. back after that. Yeah. We've home we've always homeschooled our kids and we've had family members have to pull out their children. The reasons weren't were gonna, as many as they are now. They weren't, but um yeah, if, example like they're gonna start talking about gender choice in third grade, and it's like sure you can sign off that like your kid's not gonna take the class, but it doesn't matter because again it's culture, and all their friends are talking about it, yeah. and all their friends are gonna be you know influencing those opinions. So it is, it's so tough, and um, all we can do is be that example. And, and I it hate... starts in the in our homes, honestly. It yeah. starts in our homes. All I can do is raise my kids yeah. <laughs> in such a way that they are decent members of society. That's what we decided in 2012. We were big Ron Paul people. And when we saw what the Republican Party yeah, did to Paul, them in the National uh, Convention, we, we were like, screw this. What can we do? Like, because me and her are both, that's that's one thing that we share. We like, we see injustice and we're like, we're in it together. Like, we're going to war together. So we were like, what can we do? We can become financially independent. We can teach our kids, you know, how to live the right way and all those things. So I just hate that it's come to this because it's so crazy that they want segregation like they do. Like, like you know like they, they don't do. they, yeah. you, everything go get your they own, hate they want go get your own app okay fine parlor no, no you can't have you that can't either. Have it either like like you can't coexist you you, you remember the coexist stickers you used to have the coexist sticker remember that oh my gosh yes. oh my gosh you used to have that. and like and like so we can't coexist fine i hate it but you're, you're you know what you're doing you're causing segregation which is gonna minimize the ability for us to talk to each other and people to find common ground. So when there's no common ground, that's when you de dehumanize people. People, And that's yeah. why when people like probably heard you say genocide, they were probably like, oh my gosh, it's so crazy. How do you commit genocide? You you totally dehumanize a total, total population. Yeah. Correct. And Correct. like, look at those people over there. Don't watch, watch what they're putting. putting. Watch what we're going to tell you about them. Right. No, look at what's happening. A lot of people don't understand what's happening in South Africa with, with the white farmers. Yeah. There's oh, yeah. thousands yeah. of white farmers dead. And there's a genocide going on yep. by black people. I'm sorry. That's just the way that it is. This is just the facts. And genocide, genocide is genocide. Genocide is genocide. And they go and they kill them and then they take their lands. And like, it's not a worldwide issue like they don't want to talk about it in fact they banned me from posting a link on my story to share with people what was going on in south africa a few months ago um and it's been happening here for a very long time you know like no one is crying about that lady that was shot at the capitol because she's white like no nope. yeah that's, that's crazy man. no one's talked about it you know what i mean like um no one is talking about all of the anti-white uh race crimes have actually happened here like a few a few uh a few um a few months ago like when the george floyd thing happened i was showing my followers like how this, this oh, old, we saw that. old black lady had been beat up and killed by these black men uh, you know they found her uh i don't know where it was they, they killed her there was another there was another crime that was committed inside of a 
home of an elderly home also around the George Floyd thing. This old man, this black man, um, uh, you know, saying, you know, racially motivated things, uh, attacked them and beat them up. And it was on video and the guy ended up going to jail. And I mean, we've had this for a very long time. We had a a patriot in in Portland killed. I don't know if you guys remember during the summer. Yeah, of course. course. Cold-blooded shot. And the craziest part about it was that Vice had the, the murderer interviewed the next day yes interviewed yes Yes. like unbelievable unbelievable you know he eventually ended up getting shot and killed too because i think he was on the run and whatever it was um i mean we've had so many of of these incidents you know you talk about kyle rittenhouse we can't talk about kyle rittenhouse because it's a white supremacist is a murder the kid used his second amendment right to defend himself after fleeing and running and trying not to engage in violence at all. Oh, he wasn't supposed to be there. That's not your problem. That's yeah, that's so funny. Like, like you, you can, can do stupid, stupid things. things. Does, Does that, that mean you deserve, deserve to die? die? Yeah. Like, yes, he shouldn't have been there. Yes, Doesn't he matter. was just defending, like, they're like, oh, he was just defending an auto zone, you know, or something like that. You know, like, they just, they, they minimize it. And it's, like, scary how quickly people, people can just do that, it. like, like you just run off at the mouth like that, like without even thinking, saying like, oh yeah, but he was this. And it's just like, look, the same thing with, even with the black people that get killed by cops, you know, he he, he was, uh, they'll say, cause they'll come back and they'll say, look, um, a lot of people will say, well, he has priors, he has this, but look, the bottom line is if you are in the situation and you're not acting the right way, your life is at risk. It's not saying you deserve it. It's, uh, it's just, just what happens, like the Brianna know? Taylor case. Do I think Brianna Taylor deserved to get shot? No, of course not. No. I she was in her home, you know, that could have been prevented. You know, maybe maybe she maybe it would have been best if they came in during the day and knocked on the door. Whatever it was, like, you know, maybe she would still be alive had it been a different play of, of events. But the reality is that nobody wants to talk about and they blocked me as well from sending the link to the leak police report. On, on Instagram. Yep, yep. They block me from putting that on my story and then they block me from the DM. And the reality is that I never said anything about that case because I had no idea, right? I, I didn't know. Yeah. Justice for Rihanna Taylor. Once I see that on the news, usually I know that, like, that there's more to the story. So when, you know, that was brought up again in recent months and the police re- the police audio and the whole report was leaked out and i was like let me like actually like hear what like what happened you know what why were they, the cops even there to begin with because all i heard was brianna taylor was killed in her sleep because she's black black lives matter f cops blah 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 right right and then you you hear you know you you do your research and you learn that Brianna Taylor had been under investigation for a few years. I want to say like two years or something like that. And it all started because it was a body, a dead body found in her car <laughs> in like 20. 20- yeah. And they had a warrant. It wasn't a no knock raid. I mean, I mean, I guess it was a no knock raid, but it was, they had a warrant. Th- that her investigation started way before that. Because she had been right. messing yeah. with the wrong people. She, the man that she had dated, the current boyfriend when she died, and the man before that, they were right. all implicated in crimes. And it's supposedly what was going on is that she was part of the scheme and she was like money laundering for them or hiding money or something. So it is unfortunate that she died. She shouldn't have died. But what happened was who shot first? It was her man. She was never actually sleeping. We know that because her bed was perfect. There was no blood or anything. You know, they got scared with, with the knock. They got up. Apparently, the guy says the police didn't announce themselves. Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. There's conflicting reports. Some neighbors said that they actually heard it because it was... Let's be honest. Police are not like... Police are loud. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like, they're like... Exactly. They're, they're loud. Yeah. Like, you know? Um... But when you say that, like, oh, so you think she should have died? Like, no, I, I didn't no. say that. I'm no. just saying, you know, I, you know, she put herself in a situation that it's unfortunate, but she did, you know. Yeah, and 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 true. and the same thing with George Floyd. I think the Floyd one is even. I would say even the Floyd one is even a little bit more tragic than Breonna Taylor because it's terrible. 
because the guy put his knee on the on his face and and don't tell me he didn't know that his that the guy died because you if you're a first responder you feel when the life goes out of someone. That, I, I but I'm a little bit skeptical it. about that because the the um what is it called? The fentanyl. No, the fentanyl and the yeah the autopsy. So that's a big guy, you know. Like we see wrestling. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes we see like even high school wrestling that like they fucking choke you for a bunch of times and like you're fine. So I'm a little bit skeptical. Because when we looked at the autopsy, you know, we see that this guy was really high on drugs. That he had, uh, like, some sort of condition. Meth and, and fentanyl. fentanyl. Right. Oh. Yeah. And then he had some heart condition as well, if I'm not mistaken. Or, or there's something yeah. else that basically didn't help the situation. And what I believe that happened after the video was 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 leaked after, because if you look at the video that was that came out after. You know, our entire U.S. Yeah. blew up over this man. Um, you see that um, from the minute that he was in the car when they were trying to get him out, the police were very patient, like yeah. very patient. They were trying to negotiate with him for like 17 minutes. Like, you got to go. Let's go. You're under arrest. Da, da, da. And he was. And But at that moment, he was already having a panic attack. So I think yeah. the failure yeah. from the police came when they didn't believe that he was panicking already or that he was actually having like some sort of heart attack or whatever it was that's the moment that yeah. the police should have been like wait a minute maybe he has anxiety you know let, let yeah. us take him let us call an ambulance first you know and, and see what's wrong with this man that says he can't breathe because he had been saying i can't breathe from before you know yeah, yeah, yeah he was yeah, it yeah, for his yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so i yeah, think the failure from them that. really came before the knee on the neck from the moment that he was saying that he didn't feel well when he was in the car and that he couldn't breathe right. so maybe this yeah. all could have been avoided had they listened to him yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 i agree well, I think we covered what we wanted yeah, to cover. We could obviously stay and here we don't forever. have we don't have any other questions but but it was great no i think i i hope that people I'm gonna have to put a whole disclaimer in front of this because I'm yeah, gonna. Sure. I, I already wrote it. I already wrote the disclaimer <laughs> um, because it's like, guys, I just want you to just open your ears, open your mind. Yeah. Cállate la boca. Listen a little bit. A lot bit. of our listeners will definitely you know? agree. But... No, I know, but I don't like. But it doesn't even matter. You know like, what I love? To... I just got a girl yesterday that this is the second time she reaches out to me. She's like, I disagree with almost everything you say when you talk about current events, but you have a beautiful family. Um, it doesn't change my life, and I'm like. Thank you. And she doesn't have to like wish you death. Yes. Yeah, like she's she like, I, I totally disagree, like vehemently. Yeah. And like I put something about Gab because I joined Gab and I was really like, <laughs> I was really Gab. bad. Like I put it and then I, I was like, Gab, I was like, probably racist. We should cancel it. Let's dox him, you know, and all this stuff. And she's like, when I first saw that, my, I was, I was angry. I was super angry. And then I was like, and then I realized like, it's not a big deal, you know? And, and I was like, wow. An adult. Why can't people do this? Like, why can't people just be like, listen, there's certain things. There's a lot of people. There's an author that I love and she, she can't even, she can't even, watch, she can't even um, read his stuff because she gets the vibes from him. But I'm like, man, but he writes really, no, really good stuff. Good. Yeah. His books are freaking awesome. I can't stand his politics, but like, he's a freaking great writer. His prose is beautiful. You know, like, why can't yeah. we do that? Why can't we do that? I don't know why we can't do that. Let me just say something for your, let me just say something for your view, not viewers, listeners, right? Well, There's yeah. a yeah. really big misunderstanding in left and right, the paradigm of politics. And for example, on the left, you have BLM and Antifa as the very far left. This is, these are not your regular like Democrat voters. They're not. My friends are not like mm -hmm. that. They don't yeah. even, yeah. they even think Antifa is a myth, right? I personally have been attacked and witnessed Antifa, you can't tell me it's a myth. Like, I yeah. I, yeah. I, witnessed them. Um, but they, they don't, because they don't engage in any of this. They just, they just happen to be liberals, and they're good people. But that, they have a problem with the government. Do we agree? They say there's systematic racism. Um, they have a problem with student loans. Their problem is with the government. However, they lash out at the other side. They lash out at the people. They lash out at Trump supporters. Yeah, yeah. They lash out at uh, right wingers, right Republicans, whatever it may be. That whatever it may be. Now you have your right side of politics, which 
also agrees that there's a fundamentally uh, there's something wrong with the government as well, right? They're they're not necessarily talking about you know systemic racism and stuff like that, but they but they agree that fundamentally our institutions are just not doing their job and our government is not doing its job. So pretty much both sides understand that the problem is the government. But you know what the <laughs> issue is? That the left is misinformed and the left wants bigger, bigger government. They yeah. believe the problem is also the solution. That makes no sense. Yeah. Does that make yeah. sense to you? Like, the, the, this is where we differ. Like, so, so there's not, not a lot of things separate us. Maybe the very, the crazy anarchist communist is something that we'll never agree with. Right. But when it comes down to like, okay, there, there are problems, right? Like, yeah, our education is too costly. Both sides agree. Yeah. Healthcare is an issue. Both sides agree. Cost of living is an issue. Both sides agree, right? When it comes to like the moderate, like center right and center left. Yeah. But then you have these people on the left and they just want bigger government. So yeah. Yeah, this is a question for them. You, you may disagree with everything I say. You may hate my politics. You may hate, why do you want the same people that are causing your problems to be the solution? That is literally lunacy. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. Whereas yeah, we sense. on the other side, we're like, no, slash them, you know, less regulation, less government, give the power back to yes. the people, build communities. You want to address racial inequ inequity or whatever? Let's do it. But why do you think that the same people that have screwed you over for 150 years or six years are going to help you now? Yeah, they're going to help you now. You yeah. know what I mean? You think. Uh, education is an issue, so do we. But why do you think that they have to give you that solution? And that's exactly. that's where that's where we have a fundamental problem because one side wants less government and the other one wants bigger government. And guess what? The people on the left don't make no sense. They don't because doesn't make sense. They, they don't. They, it doesn't make sense. Like you want your oppressor to also be your liberator. Explain to me how that works. Exactly. And how about this? Like the 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 one that gets me the most. That just we're going on rants now. But I want to <laughs> let me get mine in because I'm like we never talk about this on air. Like okay, you're like big business. I hate big business. I hate big corporations. Like you have just helped the government. Like the the, the people that you're aligning yourself with are all big business. Yeah, they're all you know, and it's the weirdest thing. Like the big corporations. It's like and you are part of the prevail not just prevailing dominating by force opinion like how are you how are you liberal how are you like edgy like now it's like punk rock to be conservative like we've always been like that because we were libertarians and like yeah what you, you say it's like the counterculture yeah, yeah like we're the counterculture and i'm and i'm like that's just that's just so odd to me like look one one there's 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 something called like okay there's a big company they charge too much. They don't pay enough. Okay, that's fine. But the other solution, the one that you have, is going to make everything happen at the end of a gun. So right. this one, you can say, I'm not going to do business with them. With social media, with the way we can communicate, you could put a company out of business. It's happening. You can do it like really quick. You can just be like, hey, everybody, this these people suck. They treat their employees like crap. Let's all not buy from them. Yeah. And then they're done. And that's that's why it's just, to me, it's just like, but then you say, no, the government is going to, and now everybody else gets screwed over yeah. because of the excuse. And it's, it's, it's the excuse of this bad company or whatever. There's my rant. I'm done. <laughs> let's let's, 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 let's do, do this. this. Let's Where can, you know. <laughs> yep. Yep. So look, you talk about e-commerce, so we know you have wakeupwithlinda.com. What else is up? What, what do you have yeah, and, and where can people find you? What projects are you How working on? You? Yeah. Um, you know, I think, like I said, I'm, I'm sticking just to Instagram. So wake up with Linda. Um, I have projects that I don't want to disclose anything right now, especially with cancel culture. And like, they've already come after me. You know what I mean? Like I, I, oh, I literally feel like a political refugee. <laughs> like I'm like, I, yeah, may yeah, seek, yeah. I, may, I swear to God, I'm like, I may seek asylum in Poland or Russia or like freaking Brazil, you know, yeah. any of this like quote unquote dictatorships, because there's at least more protection for us there. Um, but you can just go to Instagram, find me a wake up with Linda. I close everything else. Um, I have a telegram group, wake up with Linda. Um, I haven't opened up a gab. I haven't opened up the other one cloud hub or whatever it's called. Um, 
But, you know, that's where I'm at. You know, I, I think and I want your listeners, wherever they are, to understand that we actually have more in common than we don't. Like we, yes. we us remember, like we're all slaves. Like none of us here are Jeff Bezos. Yeah. Yeah. None of us here are Mark Zuckerberg. None yeah. of us yeah. here are in, from Goldman Sachs. Like n- there's, you know, we are all either middle class people or low income people who are slaves. Like we yeah. shouldn't be fighting with each other. You know, we we should be trying to take them down. We should be coming together and saying, you know what? I don't agree with your whatever stands, but you and I are just nobodies compared to Jeff Bezos, who's getting richer and richer and richer every single year. We should be coming together and fighting for the constitution so that you have your right to go, you know, uh, uh, protest systematic racism and I have my right to go protest whatever. You know what I mean? Right. Yep. So that that's where we need to find commonalities and say, hey, dude, listen, this 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 fight, this nasty shit going on, you know, it's not going to exactly. get us nowhere. We need to yep. cool down and we need to come together to fight the real enemy, which is not each other. It's it's the one percent. Hundred percent. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. We agree, girl. Well, thank, thank you, you so much for being well, here. Seriously. And I mean, this is where we're just gonna like it's it's, it's God's nice. plan for real. That's and so honestly, plan, yeah. like That's it's this, honestly, like sometimes I look at everything going on and I'm like, good. Like I, I sometimes I feel like that because it's like people need this to if this is what needs to happen for people to wake up, then and you know, yeah. 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 so be it. But thank you well, for well, having me. Thank you so, so much, much Linda. It was awesome, awesome to, to, to talk to you. you. Like, I feel like we know you already. So, thank you for coming on. Thank you.